chapter eight. And again, I titled this um, session Making Your Mark because this is really about Mordecai making his mark um, in history, if you will, concerning his people. So Esther saves the Jews. So going through verses one through two. On that day, King Ahasuerus gave to Queen Esther the house of Haman, the enemy of the Jews, and Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was to her. And the king took off his signet ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. So, I'm going to underline, I don't have anything in these first two verses that I wanted to, to define. So I'm going to underline, gave to Queen Esther the house of Haman. And then, for Esther had told what he was to her. And then in verse 2, I'm going to underline, King took off his signet ring and gave it to Mordecai. I would also say, underline this part. I don't have a note for it, but I'm going to underline it now and write a note because I think that's important too. So, taking this magenta, I'm going to underline this. Okay. So, gave to Queen Esther the house of Haman. My note for that is that Haman was a disturbed man who seemingly achieved everything but ended with nothing. Basically, the king giving her the house of Haman was restitution for the offense against her. And this is also a continuation of Haman's humiliation even after death. So, I am going to write that in... Restitution for the offense against her. This humiliation continues. After death. I mean, I'm also going to write a note up here. Wait, do I want to? No. All his greed. Okay. So, gave to Queen Esther the house of Haman. Sorry, I wrote that restitution. This was restitution for the offense against her. Um, this was Haman humiliation, which continues after death. And that for all his greed, he was left with nothing for his family. Normally, when somebody dies, um, their earnings, their items, their possessions go to the family members. But now that she controls the house of Haman they get nothing so for all of his plotting and scheming and lying he left nothing in the end God took everything from him and literally cut off the wicked for Esther had told what he was to her so 
All is finally revealed about the true nature of Esther and Mordecai being family. This is God's perfect timing. I'm sorry. God's perfect timing allows you to reveal things when it's necessary. So this kind of teaches me personally to be mindful of how much information I share with others because there's a time and a place to share certain things. Um, the king did not know that they were related. He did not know that Esther was a Jew, but it was known to, made known to him at a perfect time in the proper way. So, um, all finally revealed about Esther. And Mordecai. God's perfect timing. Allows you to reveal... When necessary. This is terrible handwriting, but whatever. <laughs> I'm also going to add another note up here that says be mindful of how much you share with others. whatever it doesn't have to look pretty so all of that is going to be orange i hate writing so close to the edge because it never looks right ah, sorry you guys <laughs> Let me grab my other Bible to use it as leverage. Okay. So for Esther had told him what he was to her, I wrote that all, um, all finally revealed about Esther and Mordecai. God's perfect timing allows you to reveal things when necessary and also appear to be mindful of how much you share with others. King took off his signet ring and gave it to Mordecai. That is verse 2. Make a line here because this is chapter 8. So, Basically, the king has now given Mordecai the position that Haman had. Haman had to work to achieve all that all he did, and yet it was all for nothing. It was a waste. Whereas Mordecai stayed in his lane and did only what was godly and necessary, which then allowed him to be promoted. So, Mordecai given Haman's position. This is a clear reversal. A clear reversal that is a warning To the enemies. I cannot spell today. Uh, 
of God's people and encouragement. To those who God's promise protection rest. Um, and then I have cross references of Luke fourteen, eight through eleven. And then Ecclesiastes 12, 13, 14. So again, where it says, The king took off his signet ring and gave it to Mordecai. I basically wrote that Mordecai was given Haman's position. It's a clear reversal of the roles for Mordecai um, and Haman. And it's a warning to the enemies of God's people. That you will not, you know, you'll never succeed. And there's also an encouragement to those who God's promise protection rests on. And then the cross reference is Luke 14, 8 and 11. I'm gonna get to that 14, 8 and 11. And um, this was one of the teachings on humility from Jesus. And I actually do love this passage of scripture. So it says, um, when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, least a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he, let me read it in the ESV because I know that sounds confusing. <laughs> so ESV, Luke 14 and 8 through 11. Okay. When you are invited by someone to a wedding, wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor be someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So in that kind of case, we have Haman who gave himself the highest praise you know he thought he was the man he thought he was all that and then you have mordecai who was very humble mordecai definitely was a man of influence because we see that he's always at the king's gate we know that he was an influential man but he did not take that and run with it um he kind of kept quiet with it he was humble with that so him being humbled he's now given that position that haman had and haman being the prideful egotistical guy that he was lost all that including his life so that's that. And then Ecclesiastes 12. Twelve, thirteen, and 14. It says, The end of the matter has all, has all been heard. Fear God and his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of a man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. And this is kind of relating to Haman. Everything he did was in secret. Even though he spoke to the king about certain things, he didn't reveal everything. So all of his little secrets about killing Mordecai and building the gallows and wanting to kill the Jews and the people themselves specifically being Jews, those secrets were then revealed between Esther and Harbona. And God put judgment on them. So he killed Haman and then the judgment for Mordecai being the godly, God-fearing man that he was and sticking to the laws and abiding by God, he was um, rewarded with the position that Haman had. So I hope that made sense. <laughs> so that is that. And moving on to, um, and Mordecai set over, oh, Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. Now, I did not have a note for that, honestly. So I'm just going to free write for that right now. So verse two. This was not smart, Shanae. I'm trying to use this color. But whatever. Okay, so Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. So um God definitely will give you your enemies to you. And actually, let me look up a quick cross-reference.
So for that, I'm going to write I'm sorry guys, I'm just looking for a quick cross-reference. Ah, here we go. Um, we'll hand you your, we'll hand your enemy to you to bless you. Um, I want a scripture for this enemies as a blessing. You know what? I'm just going to go with the typical using your enemies as a footstool. Um, and okay, so Psalms 110 and 1. So Psalms 110 and 1 says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies my footstool. And then Luke 20 and 43. So let me write all of these down. And this is not in the printable, so I'm going to have to write this down in the printable. But um, for verse 2, where it says, Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. It said, I wrote that God will hand your enemy to you to bless you. Um, so, see... Psalms 110, verse 1, Luke, verse 20 and 43. So 20 and 43 reads, Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And then also Acts 2.35, which says the same thing, but I'm just going to write it anyway, Acts 2.35. Um, Until I make thy foes thy footstool. 20.43, Acts 2.35. And that was not, like I said, that was not a note that I had in my... Um, notes already typed up but I felt like I needed to highlight that oh no I'm okay Tanya <laughs> I'm good just now seeing your comments um but yeah I'm okay thanks for asking though <laughs> Okay, so moving on to three to eight. Yes, three to eight. Then Esther spoke again to the king. She fell at his feet, wept, and pleaded with him to avert the evil plan of Haman, the Agite, and the plot that he had devised against the Jews. When the king held out the golden scepter to Esther, Esther rose and stood before the king. And she said, if it please the king, if I have found favor in his sight, and if the things seem right before him, and I am pleasing in his eyes, let an order be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman the Agite, the son of Hamedatha, or Hamedatha, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, who are in all the provinces of the king. Verse 6, for how can I bear to see the calamity that is coming to my people, or how can I bear to see the destruction of my kindred? Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman. They have hanged him on the gallows because he intended to lay hands on the Jews. But you may write as you please with regard to the Jews in the name of the king and seal it with the king's ring. For an edict written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's ring cannot be revoked. So now I'm going to go in and underline, I mean not underline, circle. 
And a lot of these are words that I really already know, but I wanted to define anyway. So I'm going to circle pleated, avert, revoke, um, calamity, and I think the last one I wanted to circle was edit. Pleaded is to act something in a serious and emotional way to entreat or, or appeal earnestly. So, to ask for something in a serious and emotional way. To entreat or appeal earnestly. Avert is to prevent or stave off. something bad from happening revoke so the Hebrew word for revoke is shub and that means to turn back return or reverse so Calamity That's an event that causes Great harm and suffering And then an edit. Is an official order given by a person with power. An official order given by a person with power or by a government. Okay, so there we go. All of my definitions. Pleaded to ask for something in a serious and emotional way to entreat or appeal earnestly. Avert is to prevent or stave off something bad from happening. Revoke, the Hebrew word is shub, meaning to turn back, return, or reverse. Calamity, an event that causes great harm and suffering. And an edict is an official order given by a person with power or by a government. And um, I shorthand a lot because I was on a debate team in high school, so in middle school, so I get a lot of my shorthand um, writing from that. So let's just highlight, you know, we need color. It's going to be hard to pick colors because I'm on blue paper, but Calamity is going to be in brown.
I don't think I thought this blue paper through. Pleated in this orange color. This golden yellow for averts. This magenta color for Revoke. And I'm just going to be special and use the blue. And this is a zebra, uh, the Zebra Mild Liner Pack. This is a warm pack that I'm using. And I really do love these highlighters. I know they sell them now at Target in the 15 pack. So you can definitely get your hands on these from Target, Amazon, or eBay. I got mines in the 3 pack. Uh, for 13 or 14 bucks. Okay. Alright. Got the definitions down. Now let's underline. So, um, I don't have anything for verse 3 that I wanted to underline. Um, but for verse 4, I have a note, but I'm not going to write that note out. I'm going to underline where it says, um, the king held out the golden scepter to Esther. And then I'm going to write, C note, or Esther. Four, and I think it was verse 11. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we already discussed that back then. What's on this page? So Esther, verse 4, 11 um, was when Esther was giving excuses and explaining that you can't really just go up to the king. So it's his here that uh, all the king's servants and the peoples of the king's provinces know that if any man goes into the king's inside goes to the king inside the inner court without being called but there is there is but one law sorry to be put to death except the one whom the king holds out his golden scepter so that they may live or he may live so see note for Esther 411 that's pretty much all I'm gonna say Let's use this yellow. Moving on to five, I have underlined the whole, if it pleases the king, if I found favor in his sight, and if I am pleasing. in his eyes that's all one thought and then I'm also going to underline let an order be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman I think that was it yes okay so if it please the king if and if I have found favor in his sight and if the king seems right before, and if I'm sorry you guys <laughs> if it please the king and if I have found favor in his sight and if the king seems right if the thing seems right before the king, and I am pleasing in his eyes. So, this is Esther once again being very purposeful with her words to the king. She is respectful while still appealing to his senses as a man, his role as the king, and honoring him as her husband. Every word she speaks has a purpose to it. So, I'm going to write that note here. So, verse 5, Esther speaks purposefully. Appealing to the king as a man ruler 
and husband. The cross reference I have from that is Proverbs 16, 5. And we've noticed that a lot, that Esther, when she approaches the king and when she speaks to him, she's not rude. She doesn't rush herself. She's very patient. And um, she makes sure that everything that comes out of her mouth bears fruit. She does not want to displease the king, but she also doesn't want to displease her God. So she speaks with respect, you know. So like I said, Proverbs 16 and 5 was the cross reference I had. And I'm just going to read it from the King James. I'm sorry, 16, 15. I don't know why I said 5. It's 15. I wrote 15 here, but I'm saying 5. So, um, in the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. And I'm going to read it in the ESV as well for you guys sixteen fifteen reads in the light of the king's oh you can't see it okay so down here in the light of the king's face there is life and his favor is like the clouds that bring the spring rain so she's really just bearing her fruit her spiritual fruit that she has and um seeking to gain favor from him to save her people by trying to get that edict reversed and let an order be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman. Um, let's go with this pink. For that, um, that's basically the request we would have expected um, Esther to have asked back in Esther 5-4. But um, this is God, again, operating, God's wisdom operating in her life um, that gives her the tact and ability to approach this great request in stages. So, I'm going to say God's wisdom. Operating in her life. Which gave her. The tact. And ability. To approach. This great request. And stages. So she's not rushing everything. She doesn't just immediately yell out. Oh, Haman is trying to kill my people. He's trying to kill me. He's built the gallows for my cousin slash, I guess, father. Because he's like her cousin father. Um... And that I know that he bribed me. Like, she's not nagging at the king. She's not going to the king ungratefully. She does this in a particular manner that's very wise. She appeases to his, um, sorry, I just got a text. He, she appeases to him as a man in different areas while still being respectful and, um, understanding that it takes time. And she has to make sure that everything that comes out of her lips, every, every word that she utters, has to have a purpose that um, in the end can be heard, not just by the king himself, but by God. Something The words must be words that God will um, accept and adhere to, basically. So for verse 6, it says, For how can I bear to see the calamity? That is coming to my people. Or how can I bear to see the destruction of my kindred? Again, um, she's mindful with her words. I'm just going to underline all of that. If you guys can see that. verse, All of verse 6 is what I underlined. And 
again, she is mindful of her words. She's not so much concerned about herself, um, but more so about her fellow brethren, which also shows that her character and the fruits that she bear is very pure. You know, she's not saying, you know, okay, well, I'm going to just go about my life and live as a queen. No, she's very concerned about those who don't live in the castle outside of herself because she can be protected by the king. I mean, the king is her husband. But for everyone else outside of the palace who's not a part of, you know, the king, not the kingdom. What, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? Everyone else who's basically not her because she's a queen is unprotected. She's protected by the king. But um, she shows more concern for others than herself. So, shows her character. And that the fruits. She bears is pure. Esther is a very pure woman. Um, like I said previously, she is a true woman of God. She's not selfish. She's not just thinking of herself. She's thinking of others in this current situation. I need to grab me a nice plate of food when this is over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Verse 7, um, I'm going to underline, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman. And all for that, I'm just going to write. I really like that orange color. It's so bright and neon. That's verse 7, right? Yes. Verse 7. So verse 7, um, all that Haman thought he was saving up for his family only got passed down to the very people he sought to kill. So, all that Haman thought he was saving for his family... Only got passed down to the very people who plotted to kill. The cross reference is Proverbs thirteen twenty two. Let's read that. So Proverbs thirteen twenty two. Thirteen twenty two says A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So all of the wealth, all of the things that he saved up wasn't given to his children. It was given to the just, and in this case that just would be Mordecai. Um, because Esther gave it all to Mordecai. So, verse 8. Um, all of verse 8, I'm just going to read that quickly. But you may write as you please with regard to the Jews in the name of the king and seal it with the king's ring. For an edict written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's ring cannot be revoked. So, I'm just going to bracket all of that. Because it's like one whole gigantic note that I have. And. Um, 
So basically, the king could not revoke the previous decree, so he simply made another decree giving support to the Jews against their attackers. King could not. Okay, so again, the king could not revoke the decree he made, so he supported a second de um, decree to help the Jews, and the cross-reference for that is Daniel 6, 8 through 12, so we're going back to Daniel. So this is the King James, and it says, Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of Medes and uh, the, the Persian Empire is basically what I'm going to say, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. And then down to verse 11. I'm sorry, yeah, we're going to skip to verse 11. So then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Verse 12. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of the king, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. So basically, that's just showing proof that once a king signs and um writes a decree that it cannot be revoked so the only thing left to do is really just write a second decree to counteract that decree if that makes sense moving to verse 10 but um let's just read through verses 9 through 14 so reading 9 through 14 now the king's scribes were summoned at the time in the third month which is the month of seven on the 23rd day, and an edict was written according to all that Mordecai commanded concerning the Jews to the Sartraps, Sartarps, or Sartra, I'm going to say sat, Satraps, I don't know, Sartraps, and the governors and the officials of the provinces from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces to each province in its own script, to each people in its own language, and also to the Jews in their script in their language. Verse 10. And he wrote in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed it with the king's signet ring. Then he sent the letters by mounted couriers riding on swift horses that were used in the king's service, bred from the royal stud. Verse 11, saying that the king allowed the Jews who were in every city to gather and defend their lives, to destroy, to kill, and to annihilate any armed force of any people or province that might attack them, children and women included, and to plunder their goods. On one day month what on one day throughout the provinces of king ahasuerus on the 13th day of the 12th month which the month is of adar verse 13 a copy of what was written has was to be issued as a decree in every province publicly displayed to all peoples and the jews were on their swift heart i'm sorry and the jews were to be ready on that day to take vengeance on their enemies. So the couriers mounted on their swift horses that were used in the king's service, rode out hurriedly, urged by the king's command, and a decree was issued in Susa, the citadel. So I only have two words that I really wanted to circle, which are Sibin and Vengeance, which is down here. So seven over here, I'm going to write is the third month of Jewish year, which is basically May, June in our calendar. Third month of Jewish year, which is May, June. I 
I think I need a little bit more coffee in my system. <laughs> so let's sip on that. And I'm going to use this highlighter. And Vengeance. Using this pink. So vengeance is the act of doing something. The act of doing something to hurt someone. Because that person... Did something to hurt you, something to hurt you, or someone else, it's retaliation. For an injury or offense. And it's retribution. Or in modern terms, it's basically when you want to be petty. When somebody does something to you, so you decide to do it back to them, you're basically being petty. <laughs> so that's vengeance for you. So underlining, those were the only words that I wanted to define. So going back to underline. So for verse 10, um, let me go back quickly real quick. Yeah, in verse 10, I'm sorry, that's not even in verse 10, that's actually verse 9. So where it says in verse 9, um, to each province in its own script. I'm going to write C. Esther 122 because we actually did see that line before. And um, it's just a matter of finding that note now. Verse 22, okay. So in verse 22 here, um, the Persian Empire had many languages, which included Old Persian, Babylonian dialect, Aramaic, Assyrian, Arabic, Indo-European, Elamites, and then whatever the Jewish people spoke. So I'll quickly read that. It says for tw verse 22, in its own script to every people in its own language. So I'm just writing see that because I don't want to rewrite that whole thing out. And that's another thing, um, when you're reading a book in the Bible and you notice that it corresponds to something that you wrote previously within that book, but in a different chapter, you don't always have to rewrite your note out in full. You can just um, write something that says, see uh, the book's name and then the chapter and verse that that note was written at. It saves you space to write more notes <laughs> and it's easier. So I'm going to do a lot of editing on um, the printable before I upload it. Because there are definitely some errors. Okay, so... Verse 11, I'm going to bracket completely. And let me just see if you guys have any comments. 
So verse 11, I'm bracketing completely, and that says, saying that the king allowed the Jews who were in every city to gather and defend their lives to destroy, to kill, and to annihilate any armed force of any people or province that might attack them, children and women included, and to plunder their goods. Um, that's basically the second edict or second decree that was sent out that's legally allowing the Jews to fight back without punishment. So, second edict written to legally allow Jews to protect them in any manner so this is basically telling them they can kill people they can annihilate people you know they can destroy people and then plunder whatever they get basically the edict that Haman wrote for the people to do to the Jews. Mordecai basically wrote the same edict for the Jews. So now it's going to be a full on battle instead of a complete genocide. And let's use this purple. Okay. Going on to verse 13, I'm just going to underline being publicly displayed to all peoples. Because this now is letting me know that um, there's no way people can say that they didn't know that the Jews were allowed to fight back um, because now it's being publicly displayed. It's one thing if the edict was just sent out and it was what it is. People can definitely say, oh, we never got it. You know, some people can come up with lies. But the fact that it's going to be publicly displayed for all to see, there's no excuse. If you attack a um, Jew, they have the legal right to attack you back and you cannot get angry about that. So I like that they made it publicly displayed. So, um... No excuses. For people to claim. They didn't know. About second edit. So it's really like a public warning, in a sense, from God. I'm going to write that, a warning. It's a really a warning to all who seek to harm the Jews. Like, if you attack a Jew, you're most likely going to die. <laughs> Going to verse 14, um, I'm going to underline. So the Koryas mounted on their swift horses uh, that were using the king's service rode out hurriedly, urged by the king's command. So I have that um, there was definitely an urgency to get out the word about this important decree. So... An urgency to get the word out. And when I was doing my research, um, what I came across was that Christians should uh, show a similar urgency when it comes to being heralds of the decree that the justice of God has been satisfied for us in Jesus Christ. And I kind of agree with that because 
a lot of us don't feel the need to want to quickly tell others about the gospel and um i feel like we truly need to have that urgency when we're being swift and we're hurrying because we have a command from god to share the gospel but many of us are not like that we'll discuss the gospel among people who know the gospel um but we won't go to a homeless person and discuss the gospel with them or we won't approach a guy that looks like he's been in a gang and um because of a stereotypical kind of thought that we have there's no true urgency amongst the christians unfortunately and um i'm even amongst them i am not very urgent when it comes to sharing the word of god especially to strangers um being on youtube is one thing but like i know for a fact there are people in my community where i live that i i'm basically i feel a pull to go to them and um share the gospel but there's a fear in me that prevents me from doing that which isn't good because god didn't give me a spirit of fear and he urges us even the um, apostles and jesus himself urges us to share the good news so i like that it kind of just gives me that reminder that um as a christian i need to have that urgency to share the gospel as a christian I need this urgency to share the gospel. Let's go with this blue. All right. And finally finishing up with the last three verses. Then Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal robes of blue and white with a great golden crown and a robe of fine linen and purple. And the city of Susa shouted and rejoiced. 16. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. 17. And in every province and in every city, whatever the king's command and his edict, I'm sorry, whatever the king's command and his edict reached, There was gladness and joy among the Jews, a feast and a holiday, and many from the peoples of the country declared themselves Jews, for fear of the Jews had fallen on them. So, I'm going to underline, Mordecai went out of the presence in the royal, I'm sorry, in royal, Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal robes, and I'm also going to underline the city of Susa shouted and rejoiced for 16 i'm going to underline the jews had light and gladness joy and honor and then for verse 17 because i just want to underline these so that we can talk about them um i'm going to underline where is it oh Many from the peoples of the country declared themselves Jews, and then fear of the Jews had fallen on them. So going back to where it says Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal robes, the note that I have for that is that um, God's purpose in the whole matter from Esther 1 to midpoint of uh, basically from esther 1 to 7 the real purpose um of god where is the note i can't even find it oh basically the real purpose um and all of that was further than just sparing the jews from destruction it was also purpose to raise up mordecai as the prime minister to replace haman so i mean god could have easily just gave mordecai the position But God wanted to do it in a way that actually glorified him to his people. God doesn't do things just because he can. He does it to glorify himself um, through us and through his son and through his people. Like, it's as simple as that. 
and you know like i said he definitely didn't have to um prom allow Heyman to be promoted he definitely could have prevented everything from happening but with all that happened from esther one to seven all you see is god's providential hand god working things out god answering prayers God protecting his people, him sustaining his people, him giving the correct judgment where judgment is due, him being the God that he is, you know, the God of all, the source of all. He is the sustainer, the provider, the protector. Um, he's a father, a friend, a comforter. He's everything. So that's just important for that. So that's what I did for that. But um, this also reminds me of what Pharaoh did for Joseph, which I'm going to get to that because I have a cross-reference. So for 15 okay i need color i'm sorry you guys i hate when my page looks like this we need color in our lives yes we do so we're going to use lime green here Get all these sorry back where they belong we're going to take this lavender for here Sorry about that shaking. Let's go with this peach here. This pink I'm going to use over here. That was ridiculous. And I just need one more color. Um, I like this blue color, so let's just go with blue. Okay. Okay. Now I can continue. I just don't like when my paper looks crazy. I don't like it. What I am going to do is take these notes here and stick them back here. There we go. So, verse 15. No, yeah, 15, sorry. I had to make sure I was where I was. 15. Um... God's purpose. In all these matters. Chapters 1 through 7. Goes farther. Then sparing the Jews also purposed to raise up Mordecai as the replacement. Prime Minister. I'm going to write a star and put royal robes. Because for that, um, I have cross references, which are Genesis 41, 42. And Daniel 529. What color did I use? Lime green. Okay. And then again for 15. Using this color here okay so Genesis 41 and 42 and this really just um, concerns with the whole royal robes um, that the king had put on Mordecai so 41 42 Okay, so, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it on 
sorry, put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. So this is when Joseph is made a ruler over Egypt. And if you guys don't know the story of Joseph, I definitely would say check it out. Um, Joseph was an interpreter of dreams. His brothers hated him. Re really more so his older brother hated him. And um, they sold him into slavery. But um, he became a slave. And then through that tribulation, um, he ended up becoming a ruler because he was able to help the Pharaoh. Um, so that's that. And then Daniel 5.29. Um, then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he would be the third ruler in the kingdom. So, there you go. Um, anytime somebody's being elevated into, like, a key position that has to do with the king or a ruler or some type of thing, they, um, put on something that symbolizes that so for mordecai he was giving royal robes of blue and white and a great golden crown with a robe of fine linen and purple he didn't have a gold chain but you can substitute the gold chain for the golden crown so moving on to in the city of susa shouted and rejoiced um mordecai was a man of honor and well respected so his replacement of haman brought happiness to all So Mordecai, well respected amongst people. In the empire. So him replacing Haman made them happy. See Proverbs twenty eight twelve and twenty nine verse two. Let me just write verse sixteen down. Okay. So twenty eight twelve of Proverbs. You want 28, 28, 12. So Proverbs 28, 12, this is a King James translation. It says, when righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked arise, a man is hidden. So not everybody cared for Haman. We could tell that from the way Haman um, acted. But they were basically ordered to respect him from the king. Um, but everyone loved Mordecai for who Mordecai was, not just because of his position. So they glorified him. Um, I don't want to say glorified. They exalted him, I guess you could say. And then 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rue, the people mourn. And again, the people are rejoicing because, um, Mordecai is a righteous man. So, 16... Let me get my cross-references for that open now. That would make everything so much easier in life. Sorry, guys. Give me one second. Okay. So, for 16, it says, The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. So, the joy came before the actual day appointed when the Jews would be attacked, right? Yet, they were able to defend themselves. So, nevertheless, because of the decree, the king of the king they can be assured of victory and rejoice in it ahead in the same way um as we run our course and though okay hold on let me just break this down for you guys i'm sorry guys so joy came before the actual appointed day joy came before the actual appointed day of Jews being attacked and fighting back
because of the edict or decree, because of the second edict, they were assured victory and rejoiced in it ahead of time so um, in the same way Our course is not yet run. Our salvation is not yet complete. Yet we can rejoice. Because of our confidence in our king. Then I have Philippians 1 and 6 and Psalms 97, 11. Okay, so I'm just going to reread what I wrote quickly. So it says, the Jews had light. 16, the Jews had light, gladness, joy, and honor. Basically, joy came before the actual appointed day of the Jews being attacked and being able to fight back. Because of the second edict that was um, made, they were assured victory and rejoiced in it ahead of time. So they kind of like um, had their victory brunch or victory feast before the actual battle. Kind of in a sense of how Esther had the feast before revealing the truth of Haman. And um, so they were they were assured of the victory and rejoiced in it ahead of time. So that alone just shows me that, um, you know, my course is not yet run. I'm still on that course of salvation being complete. So I can and I need to rejoice because of my confidence in the king. They were confident in the king's edict. That was the second edict that the king made. They were that confident that they were happy. So there are certain situations, like I said, financially, for me, that's where I suck at. Um, I tend to lose all confidence with finances just because I haven't worked. Okay, the last time I worked was 2012. I had to leave my job in 2013. So from 2013 to last year, 2017, I had no job. Now, I would make money because I'm a freelance makeup artist. I do makeup every now and then, but it's not a consistent basis. And um, if I wanted to work, I would have to either go to a different to the city where my fiance lives, um, to another city where I used to work at back in 2012, or go to New York. But my concern would be my son. So financially, I feel like I'm stuck. Now, don't get me wrong. The Lord provided for me. He sustained me. Um, everything that I ever needed and even things that I wanted but didn't really need, He was I was able to obtain through those years. And then at the end of 2017, he gave me a job. I was able to work in a hair salon as a makeup artist. Now, the beginning of the year, I went to that hair salon twice. One client never showed up and the other client, um, I guess she didn't expect that the hair salon was um, a black owned business. And because I look young, I'm going to be 27 come Sunday. I look like I'm 12. So because it was a black owned business and because I look young, this lady just did not want to get her face done. So that also discouraged me. So there were two times when I was discouraged, though he gave me the job. And, um, of course, my bishop prophesied and told me some things. But um, I recently, not too long ago, actually, on Friday, um, no, Thursday, I had a client at the salon. It was a young girl for her prom. And she loved it. I took pictures of it. And the hair salon owner and the hair stylist loved the work that I did. So, um you know, I was able to, again, now get a new client. I have a new client now for Sunday coming. So they had confidence in their king, right? There are times when I don't have confidence in my king, when I should have confidence in my king because he provides for me, he protects me. These Jews knew God, but they also trusted the regular earthly king. 
I know God and I don't always trust it, which is terrible. I, I mean, many of us are like that, but you know, it is what it is. So just like they had like gladness, joy, and honor, even before that set upon that appointed day, I need to continue to be like that. And I feel like we all need to continue to, you know, have that like gladness, joy, and honor, though it is hard because we are only human. But Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And Psalms 97. 97 and 11 says, Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. So I'm going to write Psalms 97, 11 through 12. And my stomach is going off. I'm hungry. Ugh. Okay, so I'm going to put this sticky note here because I'm done with this page. So let's just stick that on however it's going to work. And then coming over here to verse 17 where it says, And many from the peoples of the country defend, um, sorry. Many from the peoples of the country declare themselves Jews. This is like a two-part thing for me. So this is twofold. Basically, the first point being, one, um, as these people saw God working on behalf of his people, they wanted the same relationship with God. So as they saw God, working for his people they wanted the same actually i'm gonna say it's threefold they wanted the same the second is that they just wanted to be able to live you know they didn't want to die and my stomach is going off again. I hope you guys do not hear that. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, this is funny. To be able. I'm going to say survive. The coming battle. And then the third point. Because it's not really twofold. It's threefold. Which I just remembered. Um, the third point being that many people allied themselves with the Jews. Many people became allies. And there's actually a um, cross-reference for that that I need to re-look up. And lastly, for fear of the Jews had fallen on them. They feared the God of the Jews, basically. Um, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> uh, I am getting ready to eat because my stomach is seriously going off. This is too funny. This is why sometimes I don't like doing lives because I can't edit this out. I mean, I can edit it when I put it up on YouTube, but... That's funny. They feared the God of the Jews. And there we go. All right, let me look at the comments because I had it hidden. I think when I edit this, I'm going to edit it. Um, when I When I get ready to edit this for YouTube, I'm going to... Um, split this into two different videos so that the video is not three hours long on youtube but um yeah so that's it basically for me chapter eight was really all about god's providential hand and mordecai making his mark in history mordecai becoming the prime minister mordecai writing this edict to save his people um you know because everything else was really about esther but now we're getting to the last three chapters which really focuses on mordecai and the purpose um behind god doing all he did and I mean, sometimes God, he can do a lot. Like the, the, the process in which he goes through to get some, to get a person somewhere. 
I mean, all of this could really have been avoided, but God being the God that he is and wanting to be glorified, he goes through everything in a specific manner for his perfect timing and his perfect will. And the timing and, the, and his will have to be synced up perfectly for it to um, be put into fruition. So, yeah. Um, and God also ensured that Haman would still be humiliated even after his death. I mean, this guy is gone. He's dead. And yet he's still humiliated his house was given to esther and then esther gave it to the very man he tried to kill and then you know the king knew that he couldn't revoke the edict so he allowed them to make an edict and instead of mordecai making a completely new edict all mordecai did was basically take the exact edict that Haman wrote um and just made it available for the jews to do sorry you guys i completely lost my train of thought <laughs> But yeah, that is it. Chapters 7 and 8. We only have two weeks left, you guys. Um, Chapter 9, which is only 32 verses. And then chapter 10 is probably going to be like a 30-minute session because there were only three verses for chapter 10. So um, let me know if you guys want to do chapter 9 and 10 together or if you want to keep them separated. Um, just let me know, because I feel like chapter 10 is going to be super short, like super, super short. <laughs> but um, yeah, so next week we're going to be jumping into chapter 9. And before you know it, we're done before we have our two week break before diving into John. But um, yeah, I'm going to get off now. It's been about three hours. My stomach is going off. I need to eat. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions or concerns, um, you can definitely just message me privately through the daughter of increase page or through my personal page which is nay denise because i know some people get confused um all right tanya nine and ten all right i'm gonna do a poll after this to figure it out because it's not i don't i don't know i feel like i think we deserve a three-week break before diving into john because john is going to be really intense like extremely intense but um i'm gonna do a poll right after this um i'm going to work on the notes because i have to edit a lot of these notes because they're definitely typed up wrong and quickly but um yeah that's pretty much it if you have any comments questions or concerns just let me know in the group you can message me like i said through daughter of increase or through my personal page which is nay denise and yeah okay you're welcome tanya thank you joanna <laughs> you have a great day too but i'm gonna go eat now guys so i'll see you guys next week Bye.